ஹலோ ஹலோ வெல்கம் டு ஏ நத டியல் அபவுட் அலன்ஸ் திஸ் டைம் இஸ் ஏஐஎஸ் நிகோ ட்வெண்ட்டி ஃபோர் And I want to show you how you actually can disassemble the focus system and the helicoids and re-grease them, no, clean them and re-grease them and put them back in again. It's not that hard. Um, we just need some tools. Let's take a look at this fellow. <coughs> It's a bit, uh, what do you say, stiff in the focus and especially the back, which I will make a film about later. But in this case, I just take the focus ring and the helicoids for the front system. Maybe we should zoom out a little. There we go. So, okay, tools we need, of course some tweezers, dented or not dented, and then a, um, a JIS screwdriver, crosshead screwdriver, this is a zero, zero. I mean, double zero, which is quite handy. We need a 1.2 millimeter flathead screwdriver, some dentist tool, which is quite handy, especially this one, and the uh, pointy <clears throat> Then we need a brush, it's for adding the Helimax XP uh, helicoid grease which is the NLGI1 which is very very soft and we need of course a blower and of course we need this is a Nikon lens so we need some nail polish remover and some cotton buds which is quite handy. We need some uh, cones, rubber cones from Japan Hobby Tool. They're very good for disassemble lenses. They are six different size. I mean, it's actually 12 different size two in one end, no, one in one end, uh, it's quite handy. So go to japanhobbytool.com and then you will find them there. I will only use some of them here. <clears throat> They're very good, yeah. And of course we need a caliber to check how the focus is before we actually do anything. And we need some very, very sticky gloves. We can get them in garden centers or hobby hardware stores. But we, um, we go into this lens from the, actually the focus ring and then we need to take off the the uh, the rubber band or focus grip or whatever it's called and then it's quite handy with the soft corner of the uh, dentist tool and then there is a retaining ring here around the focus ring and we need to take it out. It can sometimes be very sticky. So, then 
we will just add a little of nail polish remover into the very tiny hole here. It's not a screw hole. It's just a hole so you can actually add some and just let it go in. Move the cotton but a little so it will melt I mean soften the um, the <coughs> thread lock and then those very sticky gloves because we can set it to infinity get a good grip here and then have a good grip on the retaining ring not the front ring but the retaining ring here and then it, it should be possible to unscrew quite handy now on the front ring which uh, then you can have a sneak peek into the focus helicoids which will, will go in but I need to take out the whole lens assembly because um, it will yeah it will be better but before doing so I take off the uh, the mount the bayonet or whatever people call it and still again it's a nickel lens so we need to add a few small drops on every screw on the I mean the three screws on the uh, on the mount so just add some and let it suck in soaking into this uh, screw and melt the thread lock there's no need for taking the three black small screws we will not be in there and then it's good to have a good grip on a screwdriver with these sticky gloves so uh, <coughs> sometimes it has to sit a while just a little before you can unscrew the screws but then it's just I mean, it should sometimes, most of the time, be very easy. And the last one. It was easy. But still, it's very much easier with those sticky gloves. <coughs> now, off with the... Uh, the mount and then the the curved ring for the aperture which connects to this curve over here goes against the tiny pin here Now, then we also need to take out that ring. You see, there is a small notch here where it goes into there. Then move the system. So, and we can also take off the, the small spring that makes the aperture click because we we have to assemble disassemble the uh, the whole focus system it's also a tiny screw and remember the orientation of this spring it goes that way i mean looking from above on the back it goes 
against, I mean, goes counterclockwise, as you can see. Or if you are aware of not remember, then we can just make a small scratch, put an arrow here. Just to be sure. Now that was part of it. Remember the back element is fully exposed as you can see so uh, keep the lens in the hand until it's out. Now there's a small set screw here with the 1.2 millimeter screwdriver as you can see And there's no need for taking it out, just unscrew it, so it's just a little out. That's enough, you see. And then get a good grip, it can sit sometimes very tight. Yeah. Therefore the, the sticky gloves are very good for that, now it comes off. So it is, and then here on the side <coughs> we have a notch and a, a guide pin, whatever it is. It's not a screw, so when the front ring is off, you just turn it over and then let it fall out. You see, this heli this uh, lens actually have a double helicoid. There's the back, which you can see if I turn the ring, focus ring. So I will turn the back element lens group. And of course the front, I mean the whole focus system. So um, <clears throat> we put the lens to infinity, that's uh, important. So we have a starting point, then flip it over, take out this. Now we put it back in again because I want to show you how, how important it is to know, exactly put a hand here. See, when the focus ring is on infinity, I also want to be sure that the back lens group is correct. So I put a mark here, here, and on the, the inner part here. And then I just write an infinity mark. Simple. I also, on the side of this piece of metal, is connected with the focus ring. On each side, I scratch and I make a scratch over here just to be sure that this uh, piece of metal connection pin whatever it calls, is correct. So, aside with this, that's the fold, the whole lens assembly. Here you can see the aperture system. It's not me who set them. The yellow mark it was actually there I guess it's from the factory now 
Here we are. Um, set the focus ring to infinity. Flip it over. And there we have a uh, just to remember. <coughs> there is the inner focus helicoid. I put a mark, and I also put a mark on the the um, focus connection thing. Oh, the focus connection pin pin here, and the lens body here. I also on every side of this here here and here and here and on one of those uh, guide pins it prevents the focus system from turning around when I move this so I only set one here and one here so I know exactly where it sits before I disassemble it. So, so let's get those. Maybe I should just hold on because the um, the front, the focus ring itself here is. Uh, connected and hold in place by three screws and a ring here so I can all I can just unscrew this it's not a problem just to put a hand here And the last screw. <clears throat> and then, then out with the ring. Here. That's it. My uh, focus ring is still on the infinity. So, I also want to be sure that the uh, inner ring here goes in the correct place. So I put a mark here, it, it goes up to the the dot, scale dot here, and the, fo the um, infinity. So I can actually just take off the focus ring. You see the two stops on each end here and over here and it goes against here so the infinity which is here goes against this and the um, the far end no the near end of course <laughs> sorry the near end goes to the bottom part so we don't need this at the moment. Nikon has been very very nice and put uh, in this lens has put on some marks here. It's not my marks but they put on some marks here. There, there. So it's infinity. So uh, it's very handy. Now, I can take off the, the scale ring with the three screws.
because I know where the dot should sit correct. They have put a mark here. Of course, if there isn't any, you just make a scratch here, there, and there. So you know where it should be when you get this, I mean, assemble the lens again. <coughs> So, and then it should be possible to take out, I mean, it should be, oh, it goes the opposite way, right, it goes like this. Sometimes they go on the back, but so it is. So, see, there's no stop at the moment. So therefore, I would like to know how long is this focus system. It should be around 35.17 or so. <clears throat> when it's on infinity yeah not bad <clears throat> so then we need to uh, take out the guide pin this is here Sorry, just take it out. Remember the orientation. So, so this pin out. Now, <clears throat> this front helicoi, when I have to come off, when I would want to take it off, now I know it should be one full revolution counterclockwise from my mark here. So I goes one full revolution and then it will come off. See? It has to say click when it goes into the thread. So, that's it. And the, the other helicoid goes, of course, the other way around. <coughs> and it has to go five, five and a qu three quarter clockwise until it came off and I have my mark here and you will see there's another mark which I do not set so I go one oh there's something with the focus Take off my gloves. See, one, and 
and two, three, four, five, and this mark will go all the way around over to here. And there is actually a mark here. It was it's not nothing I have said, but it comes off there. My uh, the other mark was around here, so it goes all the way over to here. And then it's off. So now time for cleaning. <clears throat> In this case, I use uh, lighter fluid and a um, a brush. And some napkins can be very handy. So just drop the the elements into here oh come on sometimes it can be very handy to a brush. Oh, a bit off the frame, I know, and I know, but um, let's put much space here around. Okay, if you take one. Yeah, it looks it looks pretty good. So we, then we have some napkins, they can stay on a little, and then another ring. I think it would be very very good with this regreased. So, then it looks pretty good. And there should be one more. Yeah. Focus helicoid actually looks pretty good. It's not damaged or it's 
so I think it will work pretty good. Yeah, so here we are. And then we need some napkin. evaporate really fast so uh, and stinks a bit Ooh. well nothing wrong Better than it was. Then the uh. I know I am off the frame, but This is just for showing how it can be done. So, and here we are. Is I missing anything? <laughs> it's from here, there, there. put on some more new grease and this is the Helimax XP optical and, in, and instrument helicoid grease with lithium so let's see and then I just paint some new Not much that, that this uh, lens need way too much. So It's just a thin, thin layer of of grease. It need no need to overdo it. A good uh, grease, I mean, lubrication is also the uh, the uh, tree flow. Which I like very much. Mm. 
that should be enough so so we are almost there and that's it So let's hit the marks. I have a mark here, as you can see, probably there. And we are going to go, oh, we'll go on to the, uh, the mark here, which was already there. Let's just say click. <clears throat> and there's we do it again I have my mark here and there and then I put on the helicoid it says click now this mark over here has to come all the way up to here and then I count one two Three, four, five. Now, that's the correct place. Then I add the uh, the inner helicoid, which go the other direction, and uh, the mark is here with the notch. This one here. And it goes to the mark here. It has to say click or something. It can be a little tricky to hit the thread. But no need to press too much. Sometimes it's better to go put the um, helico here and then go a little backward until it sets Hopefully, says click. <laughs> mm. I know it should be there, no matter what. Okay, we try to go all the way around and see what's happening. Just click there. This. Hmm. So here we are. And for one full revolution around. So, and how long is it actually? We need my. Uh, let it go. Just to be sure we are back on track. It's not that bad. I mean, um, yeah, it's in the, it is in that area, so it's not that bad. Now, then I can add my guide pins, and I take the just to have a <clears throat> kind of direction where you should go. I take number one first and 
as I wrote there, is number one. Then I put the guide pin in. So, and I should have loaded my screwdriver with a screw. And we also need some thread lock, which is the Loctite 222, and a point the lid is on, lift up the lid, and then lift here. So now it's open. Okay, yeah, we need some. Sometimes it gets uh, dry. Just a little. There's no need for putting on too much. And the uh, guide pin has to sit correct. Therefore, I make the mark on each side. So I can see where the where the mark is and then gently tighten the screw. Wow. That looks good. So the other one. I could also add some some grease here on the uh, in this area here, and I think I will do so. It can help a lot, but again, not too much. So, here we are. Wow, it goes really good. And, um, yeah, I can just add some. I can just add a little. So, uh, Just a little will do a lot. So, <laughs> now we are here. Then add the uh, dot ring. <laughs> you can only sit one way, like this. So the stop is here, and the uh, dot is here, and the point is here, mark here, so um, it will end it up being very good, I think. <laughs> yeah, 
interesting lens to work with because uh, most of the time the this here will come out on the, from the back gently tight so now now I actually can put the the uh, focus ring on and it should be on infinity because this is on infinity so uh, it goes against the stop here here so and then load a screw This is uh, important because the um, this brass ring is actually pushing on the edge edge of the uh, focus ring, but it is screwing in here. So uh, it has to sit quite tight. Keep a good. Oh gosh. No, no, no. E. Yeah. That was. Am <laughs> I not going to that? Yeah, here we are. So now, now we know where it is. And then the second one. And this lens, the uh, one of the holes was a bit off, so it was not easy to uh, get the screw into the hole. Okay, it goes. And gently tighten it. See. Wow. It goes really good. Now it's time to put the uh, spring for the for the aperture. Click. And as I set my mark here, I know where it should go goes the opposite direction where the dot is. Oh. <laughs> oh. First load a screw. So. Not tighten it yet, but uh, I will also put on in the other screw. You see, it has to not sit too close to the here to the uh, edge of the ring, so you have to pull it a little this way. So then it's time to. I shall tighten it. 
and then just add a little some loop no need for doing too much and then the aperture in comes out comes on and then do some Okay, now we're almost there. <coughs> Where is my lens assembly? Because then it is actually the only thing that needs to be put in. You see, put the lens on infinity. I mean, put the, <laughs> the focus ring on infinity. Because this one also has to be on infinity. And maybe you remember I set a mark where infinity actually is. Then I have my guide pin here that goes into here. So all is actually going all the way and hopefully it will catch the the pin here see goes there and the guide pin is in then I just need to add my front ring And it goes a bit tight, but uh, then just need <coughs> now tighten the small screw here. Not too much. Add the retaining ring. Click. Only goes and then tighten, then the rubber, rubber band here, put it on so it sits correct. Yeah, there. Now, then <laughs> this was actually the uh, the front part, I mean the whole focus system, but there's also a back, which is this one. So now I want to show you how you you uh, actually can re-grease that part. It's a bit tricky <clears throat> because before I disassemble it. I will set my focus to infinity. So, and then add a scratch here on each side of this guide pin that moves the back lens group. Here, here, and then also, I know there is a yellow mark here. I guess is from the factory but I will set a mark here and put a uh, infinity small infinity mark here so I know where it actually is when this back helicoid come off I also have a mark over here so I know where it comes off so how long is it actually from the back lens from the front lens here to the back at infinity well I measured before and uh, I will do it again just to show you how much it is it should be something 30 no 52 point 
20 or so as you can see it is better so this is the distance from here to the edge of the of this ring here so now that's <coughs> correct now I can uh, take off this back guide pin by unscrewing the two small screws and um, then it's possible to take out the lens, the back lens group. So this is how it looks. The pin here goes down into this here. Here. See? Okay. Now it's time to unscrew this. And it goes not that counterclockwise before because then it cannot go any further. So I set it here where my mark is or the yellow dot which is here. And then I go a for almost a half revolution and then a full revolution around and then it comes off Pop. see now then I have my back lens group and my uh, aperture blades fully exposed which we can do it like this amazing piece of work so <clears throat> I need to um, to come in and clean the helicoid here I need to take the back lens group out so if any trouble I put a mark here because uh, I have no idea if it's correct or not and then I also need to do another thing those handy cones are very good to parking a lens there so I need to um, uh -huh use some um, nail polish remover again because there's a hole here which also needs a small drop and let it just come into the thread So that's enough and then use a smaller one of those cones to probably unscrew it. And then it is off. That's good. Now, then I can just add this to the, I can park this somewhere, mm -hmm. can it be parked here, it's bigger, yeah, so I just this, use this as a parking place, <laughs> and then drop this into uh, my lighter fluid. <coughs> Just a small short time in that bounce.
add a brush it's time to change the lighter fluid it gets it gets dirty now and then so uh, Now, to do the other helicoid around here, I will just uh, use some or oh, a cotton pot and uh, go around the helicoid oh. and just wipe of most of it and we take another one Because if uh, I mean, if I should clean the uh, the helicoid, then I should take out the full or the aperture plates. So this is a also a handy way of doing it. So, now here we are. <clears throat> now it's time for doing some regrease. Not very much. Oh, maybe it's. A Napkins to dry it out. Now it goes a bit too fast. Sometimes it needs to stay a little longer in the um, lighter fluid to take all the old grease out well it depending on how how bad it is but again this is this film is to show how you actually sample it and clean it and re-lube it the more easy way so and then time for grease it only need a small amount of Something like that. And I could add a little, just a little. So, 
<coughs> now, then I can ju just add my my lens group again. That looks pretty good. And of course, if I want to be sure it stays in place, I can uh, just add a little Loctite 222. No need for adding too much. That's enough. So now it's time to put it back in. I have my mark and the other mark which is here and um, then it should just go in all the way to the where it stops here and it cannot go any further so there it's correct Ooh. And then the the guide pin pin and some thread locker I have it on infinity this pin goes in here hopefully hmm. I said hopefully and those mark I put on each side of the uh, guide pin here has to be you have to see them <coughs> when they, they, it's correct. So it's there. And then the, the last small screw Gently tighten one and the other, and then there. And here we are. So, this nice old fellow works again. And then we can uh, put in the aperture curved ring. <laughs> I don't know the name of it because I do not have a repair manual for this lens. I couldn't find any. So this ring goes in and stays there. So it can be moved by the aperture ring. <clears throat> Put the uh, aperture ring on 22 here and then the uh, the the fork here which is from the back side of the mount so when moving this it will also move this and especially 
the small pin here which goes again to this curve here so by doing maybe it's better the other direction for me because then I can just press on it and put it over the hook or the pin here there so it will stay on the where it is there and then I can just doing this then we are back now some thread lock on those three screws and then we are done So, so it is, this old fellow can work again, that's just amazing. So that's it, and uh, again, hope you enjoy and can use the information so uh, I wow hold on a second we cannot have a fingerprint of this front element so it is I mean we could also do the back element so it's Wow, it's good. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.